Good morning, y'all. Happy Saturday. I hope uh, that so far your Saturday has been good, uh, that you've waken up with, waking up refreshed with a renewed mind. And if not, I hope that you get there. I, this morning, did not get in a late start. I woke up. First, I was nauseous. Then I had a headache. Still have a headache, but I'm going to go get me some BC powder and call it a day. So, but I did want to come and talk to y'all. I missed y'all so much. I was supposed to do a video two days ago with some of the stuff we're talking about. So some of it is about two days old, but y'all already know the drill. I want to talk to y'all. But last night, I uh, got done doing what I was doing early, working early. So I was like, all right, I'm about to go get some snacks and stuff for the house, for the kids, for the hubby, what have you. And then go to the gym and do a video. I was debating on going to the gym. Child went to Walmart, walked in, walked right back and was like, mm, I don't feel like it went to the gym. <laughs> then went to the store, cooked dinner. And while I was cooking dinner, uh, first my son was home. He came home. He got a new car because his died like last year in California. It gave us four good years though, driving back and forth from Maryland to California was six or seven times. And then he had taken my daughter's car for the last year now. So he just got another one. So he came home upstairs and then my daughter wandered downstairs and we were talking. Then my husband came home from the gym, Corey. And it was nice us all being in there talking. I didn't want to interrupt that. Um, so we had a good time just talking about everything or whatever. Then we ate dinner. Um, Cha finished Love Island. That show is so Good, y'all. I love Love Island. Now, I went from tweeting about watching episode one, like, why y'all ain't tell me it was an hour and a half, and there's seven episodes already, and I thought I was going to blow through three and realize that the first one was an hour and a half, to being caught, not only caught up, waiting for Monday. Y'all, they come out every night. What? I'm going to make time. I love that show. But anyway, so I watched... Love Island, but I, again, wanted to come to y'all because I miss y'all so much. So let's go ahead and get into the topics. First up, let's talk about Miss Monica Garcia, y'all. So this is according to the Bravo Babe. It was on her page. Uh, it says Monica has stayed booked and busy since she announced she wouldn't be returning to Salt Lake City. Then they asked the question, do y'all want to see Monica back? So let's look at, Monica did an interview and they were asking her about the cast, y'all. Let's see what she had to say. Hold on. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm so serious. <laughs> no, honestly. Okay, here we go. See, it's it's been kind of wild. I haven't talked to any of them. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen all the things online that's going on with like the awards they're accepting and things like that. And you know, they'll make disses and their acceptance speeches towards me. And it's just, you know, it's kind of, it's it's kind of interesting because Meredith mm -hmm. accepted an award, and she said this is for women everywhere, unless she happens to run a troll account. Oh and gosh. it's like, oh really? But yeah. if you, you know punch your friend square in the face, you're still welcome. Or, you know, yeah, if you steal girl. millions of dollars from the elderly, you're good. Mm -hmm. But if you have a troll account, mm -hmm. you know, that's the, mm, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. She doesn't so, yeah, okay. you know, so. there's there's been no communication, no talks. I mm -hmm. You know, they like to diss me a lot, but I think at the end of the day, they know, they know. Mm -hmm. They know the truth. And yeah. we had an incredible season that as much as they like to paint me out of it, I was a part of. Yeah, I'd and, say so. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it is what it is with them. Mm -hmm. They have a new season coming out. Good for them. I'm sure it'll be great, mm -hmm. and, you know. Um, so I just do want to get a kind this of like a the beginning status update. Like, yeah. where do you stand with any of the women? Are you, like, do you talk to any of them? I know you said you talked to Mary a little bit ago. Does mm -hmm. that still, like, remain true? Yeah, Mary has always been incredible. Mm -hmm. She's always been amazing. She... I can tell she de genuinely cares about, are you, like, she'll just text me sometimes out of nowhere and be like, are you good? Like, mm -hmm. she cares about my mental health and well-being. Mm -hmm. I haven't talked to any of the other women. Mm -hmm. um, they are definitely holding true on their little alliance, their little mm -hmm. pact. Um, and I wish them well in hell. But, you know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm so serious. No, honestly, it's it's been kind of 
So that's what Monica had to say. Uh, Mary checks on her for real and is concerned about her mental health, which I'm not surprised. Mary took a liking to Monica. Um, the other ladies have not. I'm going to say it like that. I've said it. I said it after the season ended. Um, and I still hold true to the same. I see. I can see both sides. I see why Monica feels the way she feels like, oh, it was just a troll account. Blah, blah, blah. I also see the women's side where I don't want nothing to do with you. I think they have every right to not want to deal with someone when you don't know. Here we are filming this show. At times, we may be vulnerable. Let's say we go out, have some drinks, whatever, uh, get to talk and cameras go down and we start talking real life stuff. Am I going to have to worry about seeing my stuff on a blog? Now, th that could be said for any of them, but to know that you specifically we're running a troll account. Now, again, I did most of the time that account was um, targeting Jen Child. Cause I remember that account used to send me stuff. It used to send a lot of us creative stuff, child tagging us and everything. Um, and it would be like, mm, this is kind of like, but they were determined to take Jen down. However, um, so, so I don't think it necessarily was targeted for the women. Some of them just got caught some strays, right? But again, I can see how that would make you uneasy wanting to film with someone who had done that. I can see that. I can understand that. Um, who knows? I think Monica will be back. I don't know. We shall see. I'm of the mindset where if she comes back, she comes back. If she doesn't, she doesn't. Like it was no, what as Dorinda said, skin in the game for me. So y'all let me know what y'all think. Moving on, let's talk about the Real Housewives of Atlanta, y'all. We have talked about Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta since uh, Simon and Portia's divorce in February. It seemed like we've been talking from Simon and Portia. Now we're on to Miss Kenya Moore. We know that Kenya allegedly, well, she was suspended from the show for allegedly showing pictures of Britt Edie um, taking down a penis. So. Let's talk about this. The Real Housewives of Atlanta's Kenya Moore and ex Mark Daly settled divorce five years after split. Now, I remember on her live that she recently did, she said that she was a single mom. She wasn't getting help um, from her soon to be ex husband. No, we're not divorced yet. Back in December, she said she never, because I went back to check, because I was like, are you lying? Because didn't you say back in December, blah, blah, blah. What she said back in December, semantics, I do believe that Kenya does play word games. And, but what she did was she said that the judge granted a divorce. So it was like, yes, the divorce, uh, uh, the divorce is final, but the judge granted the divorce. When I looked up, what's the difference between the judge granting a divorce and divorce being finalized? The judge has to sign off on that. Because before I thought it was one and the same. Oh, the judge granted a divorce. That means you're divorced, but no. The judge still has to sign. Now, that was back in December when she gave the exclusive to People magazine saying that the judge had granted the divorce and people assumed that it meant she was divorced, which I think that's what she wanted us to assume. But anyway, according to Us Weekly, Kenya Moore and her ex-husband, Mark Daly, have settled their divorce five years after announcing their split. According to court documents obtained by In Touch. On Friday, June 21st, a judge signed off on the ex's agreement earlier this week. Moore was awarded primary custody of the pair's five-year-old daughter, Brooklyn. However, the Real Housewives of Atlanta star and Mark agreed to share joint legal custody. Custody exchanges will occur in a public location. Mark also agreed to pay Kenya $2,000 per month in child support, plus an additional $1,000 per month to fund a college savings account. Neither Moore nor Daly will receive alimony or spousal support. The judge ruled that Moore will have final decision-making authority to sign, monitor, and control any and all economic opportunities for the minor child per the outlet. I feel like that has to do with filming. Again, she has the final making authority to sign, monitor, and control any and all economic opportunity. So I truly believe, you know, it could include whether she models or commercials or whatever, but definitely for the show. Remember that one season where Brooklyn was blurred out, Mark was doing that to be petty. I felt like Moore and Daly also submitted a parenting plan to the court, which stated that Moore would have the final decision on whether to include the minor child 
on RHOA or Bravo or any other economic opportunities for more, but she is required to discuss the opportunity with Daly. So all she has to do is discuss it with Mark, but she has the final say. In addition to finalizing plans for the twosomes custody arrangement, the exes also agreed on what to do with their Georgia home. At one point, Daly wanted, re reportedly wanted a portion of the sale of the home. Her home. Both parties will retain all rights, titles, and possessions of any real property located in Georgia, all equity therein as sole and exclusive property, and will be solely responsible for all debt secured by the real property, both personal and business. Both parties will retain all accounts in name as sole and exclusive property, and will be solely responsible for all debt in name, both personal and business use. So basically, Kenya gets to keep her property. I couldn't believe that he wanted a piece of that, like... It is with profound sadness that I regret to inform my fans that I'm divorcing my husband, Mark Daly. Moore said in a statement to us weekly at the time. Oh, when they first announced their divorce in 2019. So she's officially, officially divorced. The judge has signed off and she gets to keep her home, which I am glad for her. Speaking of Kenya, Kenya Moore accused of owing five-figure tax bill amid alleged RHOA suspension. So remember a couple of, year, a couple of years ago when... Kenya owed a tax debt and she had said that it wasn't true, came out that it was, she satisfied it, but good for her. And to me, owing a tax debt, I guess it's not, to me, it's one thing if you are evading your taxes and I don't, I don't get that Kenya was evading. Just maybe you didn't account for something or what have you. Like, I don't feel like she was trying to scam. Those things happen. That's how I feel. So I don't think it's, salacious i think she owes the story is that she's hit with a five-figure tax bill but i personally don't think it's salacious but the story is in you owing this amid a suspension and alleged firing real housewives of atlanta star kenya moore was hit with a tax bill weeks before she was allegedly suspended indefinitely from the bravo show in touch can exclusively reveal according to court documents obtained by in touch the reality star was slammed with a uh i guess a uh, fiari Fascius by Fulton County in Georgia. The document filed on March 14th said Kenya owed $14,139.55 in taxes plus interest of $562 for a grand total of $14,711.80 that remained unpaid for the year 2023. So you see how they say five figure tax debt because they want the headline to be really salacious. It's $14,000. It's $14,000 a lot. It's relative. To somebody like Kenya, it's probably not. Then again, not just for Kenya, but any celebrity or Bravo Leb, sometimes they don't have all the money that they front that they do, you know, or it's not liquid. But when you initially look at it, to me, $14,000 seems like, oh, that's not huge for Kenya in the grand scheme of things. The county has yet to file a release. Back in 2018, Kenya was hit with a tax lien by the IRS for the year 2016. Uncle Sam claimed Kenya failed to pay $150,000. The lien was eventually released by the IRS. The new bill comes as Kenya faces bigger issues with her job on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. What's interesting is I'm reading this In Touch article, and it goes in to talk about what allegedly happened at the Kenya Moore Spy event, and it says, Brittany was not present at the event, which was attended by Kenya's other RHOA cast members. So come on, in touch. Y'all are better than that. Do your research. Britt was there. Anyway, so Kenya has a $14,000 tax debt. I'm sure that she will get that taken care of. But it does seem like a lot. Like first this alleged suspension, then this alleged firing. Now this tax debt is coming out. But the bright spot is that she is officially divorced from Mark and that she gets to keep her home. Speaking of Kenya, let's get into what Candy had to say about Kenya being suspended, y'all. Because Ms. Burris had a lot to say. Now, and realistically, I do see stuff and I'm like, why are they doing that? Like, I don't like the fact that they suspended Kenya. Yeah. I know a lot of people's like, she shouldn't have shown that, but this is housewives. Like how many times we done did something that you think somebody shouldn't do? So who made the rules? Like, right. why y'all all of a sudden got a, such an issue with somebody 
doing something crazy but, to somebody. It's believe like, it or not, that it, drama. It, it was too. in the public. It was in the internet. She, and the girl came and heard. It's like, okay, well, that was the yeah. real. You don't get to choose how Y'all look at Tiny's so. face. I just wasn't feeling all of that, but hey, we'll see when it come out to you. Yeah, for you know Kingdom everybody's Wars, so sensitive now. Everything, yeah. You know, oh. And I just knew with bringing <clears throat> Kenya back, it was gonna keep like the the little drama going. Yeah. The little, and she's needed, like to I, agitate. I totally a situ- agree. She's oh, she kept it going, all right. <laughs> yeah, she definitely did. Now they, now really she, she it up. It up. <laughs> but you know, and I would say this: being a person that has been there. It be a lot of people on the show who be trying to protect their image, so they'll say stuff off camera now. And realistically, I do see stuff, and I'm like, why they? All right, so y'all see what Miss Candy had to say. Someone said she should have kept this energy when she didn't want to be a part of the show anymore. If Phaedra was to ever return, let me blow that back up. Someone else said. Now, Candy, the same argument could be made for Phaedra, considering she was retaliating against you after you were taking Apollo's side and told other castmates she was with another man shortly after filing for, it says division, but maybe she meant divorce from Apollo, which is what prompted her to see you as an enemy and led to what went down. Also, this is another example of how she always sugarcoats Kenya's bad behavior, but then was the same one complaining about how Portia and Phaedra would always defend each other no matter how bad the behavior was. Child. Somebody said, I call bull, says the same person who wanted Portia and Phaedra fired for accusing and humiliating her. Y'all, I don't know. What do y'all think? I don't know. I, I kind of feel like, I mean, Kenya is her friend. We know that. And I have always said that you can't dictate how a person is going to retaliate. I still stand by that. You come at a person, you can't dictate their response. I used to say that about Candace on Potomac all the time. You don't get to tell somebody how to respond. I've raised my kids and would tell them, listen, if you start with somebody, you don't get to throw a pebble and then cry victim if they throw a boulder back at you and blow your life up. That's the chance you take when you come for somebody. Now, of course, we know there's instances when we can say, okay, wait a minute, I only did this and that response was crazy. But at the end of the day, you still don't get to dictate it. But that still doesn't mean your response is not going to be absent of consequences. You can respond however you want. You have a right to respond. However, your response may not be absent of consequences. You may have to pay a price for responding the way you want to. And if Kenya showed these pictures of Britt Eady taking down a penis then Bravo was like, hey, we need to suspend you while we investigate. And if they decide to terminate her employment or her contract, then that's that was the risk she took when she did that, you know? So I don't know. We shall see. Um, what do y'all think about people making the argument, well, Candy, you should have that same energy for Phaedra and Portia. Do y'all think the two equate to each other? Like, for instance, people were using Tom Sandoval. And I'm, I think I mentioned this on the, vi- uh, on the video or in my recording, in my podcast episode with Keisha Irvin, a.k.a. Color Me Pink. If you have not, please go watch that episode or you can listen to it wherever you listen to your podcast. What else is going on? iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, all those places. People were trying to equate Tom Sandoval recording Raquel FaceTiming when she was playing with herself to what Candy did. But the difference is, while, yes, he did that, And it was disgusting that he did that without her consent. It was not watched on camera. It was not shown on TV. You get what I'm saying? And Raquel's actually suing him. And I believe she's suing um, Ariana because she said Ariana sent it to her friends. Ariana said, I believe she sent it to herself so she can have it as proof. Maybe I think she said that. I'm not sure. But she said she didn't send it to her friends. But anyway, I don't think the two are equatable because the second wasn't shown on camera. But what do y'all think about this? Do y'all think these two things, um, a comparison can be made? A rumor being already out there, allegedly, of what Portia and of what Candy and Todd allegedly wanted to do to Portia. Now, we all know the rumor is that it was already out there and started by a former producer. But do y'all think it's the same? Y'all let me know. 
All right, moving on, y'all. Let's talk a little bit more of Atlanta, but let's talk about another newbie, Kelly Farrell. So it's an In Touch Weekly exclusive. RHOA newcomer Kelly Farrell's restraining order battle with stepdaughter exposed amid nasty divorce. Kelly Potter Farrell and her stepdaughter made shocking allegations against each other in court before the chef was cast on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. In Touch has exclusively learned. Child, they gonna get what's in your past, honey. You coming on as a housewife? These outlets, they all, everybody, bloggers, everybody. They gonna, podcasters, all of us, child. They gonna get the info. According to court documents obtained by In Touch, Makia Farrell, Kelly's stepchild, filed for temporary protective order in June, 2022. So y'all remember, this is Kelly's stepdaughter. Kelly's going through a divorce and her stepdaughter filed for a protective order against Kelly in 2022. Kelly was married to Shuvalo. I don't know how to say that. Pharrell from 2011 to 2022. As In Touch exclusively reports, the exes are in the middle of a bitter divorce. In Marquia's petition, Kelly's ex's daughter, the then 24-year-old accused Kelly of having made many threats to me, stating she will beat me up or get someone else to do it. She comes to my job to provoke me by bumping into me. The filing read, Marquia said the new Bravo star blamed her for the breakup of, of her and my father. A couple months ago, she followed me home along with her family, came into the house and cornered me against the wall, accusing me of something I didn't do, Marquia claimed in the petition. Marquia said she has terminated my employment. I'm sorry, she has terminated my position at my workplace. This has caused a lot of emotional distress for me. I have suffered with headaches, panic attacks, and anxiety. She pleaded with the court to order Kelly to stay 200 yards away from her. The petition was dismissed weeks later due to Mar Marquia failing to appear for a hearing. Kelly has yet to respond to the allegations in court. So Kelly's stepdaughter filed a uh, wanted to get basically a restraining order against her or order of protection and wanted the court to order that Kelly stay 200 yards away from her, but it was dismissed because she didn't show up for the hearing. Kelly's lawyer, Bobby A, I'm not sure how to say his last name, tells in touch with regard to Mr. Farrell's 25 year old daughter's purported application for restraining order against Ms. Potter Farrell, my client denies in all caps, the entire fabricated flight of fancy let me start using that. You and your flight of fancy. The entire fabricated flight of fancy factual account by Miss M. Farrell. However, since issues were never joined in the matter and Miss Potter Farrell was never served with the same, the application was never litigated, considered by the court, and therefore was of no legal effect whatsoever. Uh, Kelly tells in touch about the situation. Unfortunately, after taking in her ex's adult daughter, Marquia, during the height of COVID, I was informed that she physically assaulted my oldest daughter, Chloe. So now she's saying that her ex's daughter who filed the order of protection against her actually physically assaulted her daughter, Chloe. She continued, this included Marquia biting and throwing a burning candle at Chloe. At the time of the incident, Marquia was 21 and Chloe was only 14. I'm a mother first. So, of course, Marquia was chastised verbally. Verbally might not have did. However, this isolated incident began a domino effect, which eventually culminated in the demise of my 10-year marriage. Oh, to her husband. So, wow. So, remember, in Marquia's filing, Kelly's ex's daughter, she said that Kelly blamed her for the demise of her and her father's marriage. Kelly has said again with this incident that Marquia allegedly bit and threw a burning candle at her daughter. She said this isolated incident began a domino effect, which eventually culminated in the demise of my 10 year marriage. She ended furthermore, as the sole owner of Nana's chicken and waffles, I was Marquia's only employer at the time. Okay. So, because remember Marquia said she terminated my employment. Okay. Cause I was wondering where does she work? So she worked for their business. As everything began to spiral, I had no choice but to terminate Marquia due to her aggressive actions in my home and at the workplace. In addition, In Touch obtained documents that show Kel Kelly filed for a protective order against Marquia and her ex on January 12th. 
The court granted the temporary order and awarded Kelly exclusive use of the family home. Marquia was ordered to vacate the home immediately and stay away from Kelly. Wow. So Marquia filed the protective order against Kelly. It was not litigated and dismissed because Marquia didn't show up to the hearing. Kelly filed an order of protection against Marquia and her ex, and it was granted. She was awarded exclusive use of the family home, and Marquia was ordered to move out and stay away from Kelly. Ciao. Um, her ex tells in touch, the incidents my team and I are replying to do not reflect how myself or Kelly envisioned our family dynamic to be. Personally, I did not want to involve my children or hers in any public platform. However, it would be a disservice to not address the facts instead of the salacious attempts she is making since she is unfortunately going to be eventually exposed for her wrongdoing sooner rather than later. Let me read that sentence again, he wrote. However, it would be a disservice to not address the facts. Oh, child. It would be a disservice to not address the facts instead of the salacious attempt she is making since she is unfortunately going to be eventually exposed for her wrongdoings sooner rather than later. Regarding the incident between Marquia and Chloe, which again is his daughter and Kelly's daughter, his rep, Francis Perdue, claims the confrontation was started after the younger child's alleged actions. They claim Chloe started the fight and Marquia was defending herself. Who child, she bit her, whatever. I mean, not whatever, but you know, child, she threw a lit candle, they said, allegedly. The rep said the family resolved the incident without involving the police, but it caused tension within the household, I bet. Regarding Marquia's employment, the rep said Kelly removed her from the work schedule at Nana's Chicken and Waffles, but her ex and Marquia's daddy reinstated her. Girl, the incident caused more tension and Kelly left their home in January 2022, the rep alleged. Yeah, I bet that would cause tension. Due to the altercation at the home between my daughter and yours and, her, and Marquia's alleged aggr aggressive nature, I'm taking her off the schedule only for her daddy to be like, ah, ah. no, no, she's going back on. Mm. The rep said that the ex, and I keep saying the ex because I forget his first name and they're only referring to him by his last name, Chivalo, I guess. So the rep um, said that Kelly's ex filed a restraining order against Kelly in early 2022 due to alleged threats. They told us Kelly's 2022 restraining order against Marquia ended up being dismissed in the end, but the order against Oh, the ex was upheld. However, the rep said the court allowed visitation with his children on Fridays through Mondays. So his team is now saying that Kelly's order against Marquia was dismissed, but her order against him was upheld. But if that was the case, why did Marquia have to vacate the home? So somebody lying. His team said he has yet to see his kids since Kelly filed for her new restraining order in 2024. The rep added, Mr. Farrell's primary goal is to achieve. Oh, Chuvalo, it... I said I couldn't think I was referring to him as the ex because they only mentioned his, his last name, Chuvalo, and I couldn't remember his first name. His first name is Chuvalo. Okay. Mr. Farrell, a.k.a. Chuvalo's primary goal is to achieve justice and regain normalcy in, their, in his relationship with his children while protecting his financial and business interests. He has faced numerous challenges due to Kelly's escalating actions and public behavior, but he remains committed to resolving these issues through legal means and assuring that both sides of the story are represented fairly. Kelly tells us in response, it's truly disheartening that a grown woman can justify biting, throwing a burning candle and abusing a minor child in the manner that she did for any spurious reason. One of my biggest regrets was not pressing charges against Marquia at the time because she was my purported stepdaughter. Sadly, it still triggers undesirable memories. When I see marks on Chloe's arm from the incident, girl. And to hear that she's apparently working with kids now is truly appalling since she has no issues committing violent acts against them while taking zero accountability. Ooh. As In Touch exclusively reported, Kelly filed for divorce from Chivalo in 2022. She listed the date of marriage as August 20th, 2011, and the date of separation as January 2022. Kelly and Chivalo share three children, Chance, born 2012, and twins, 
uh, Chastity and Chelsea, born 2015. The chef has an older daughter, but well, Kelly has an older daughter named Chloe from a previous relationship. Kelly was awarded primary custody of the kids and Javala was ordered to pay child support. Earlier this year, Javala was thrown in jail after the court found him in contempt. He was released weeks later. Recently, Kelly asked for her ex to be thrown back in jail for allegedly refusing to comply with the court order. Kelly opened the restaurant, Nana's Chicken and Waffles, during the marriage, which she was awarded in court. So it's her bit. Chavala disputes she is a sole owner. A hearing is is a hearing has been set for September. So is this going to play out on this show? Are we going to get to see all this? I mean, we don't know how long they're filming. What, it's July now? So will they be filming in September for the hearing? Will that... Will she even be allowed to talk about it? Will he try to block that? Kelly got some things going on, honey. So her stepdaughter allegedly bitten through a candle at her 14, her then 14 year old daughter, his team, the father's team is saying it was done in response. Child Kelly says she's still triggered when she sees the marks on her daughter's arm. So I'm assuming the bite marks I don't know what happened and I wasn't there. I'll just say as, a, as human nature, going off the first reaction as a mom. Yeah, you might not have had to involve the police. Well, you might have after I was done. I'm just going to say that. But we don't know what happened. We don't know what happened. We're all, I'm just speculating. Cha, mm, 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 moving on. But Atlanta may be a little something. Speaking of Atlanta, my favorite ex-peach, Miss Nene Leakes. This is according to Deadline, Lifetime set summer series, Outrageous Love with Nene Leakes. Exclusive, Lifetime is expanding its programming slate this summer with two new call-on-camera clip shows led by Outrageous Love with Nene Leakes. Leakes will appear in Outrageous Love, premiering on July 1st at 10 p.m. The show will highlight the ups and downs of couples' love lives with commentary by Leakes, who will also draw from her life experiences to give additional insight. Leeks was one of the original cast members of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, which premiered back in 2008. In her 11-season tenure on the Lifestyle series, Leeks created many memorable moments and one-liners like, oh, not a white refrigerator, I said what I said, so nasty and so rude, and many more. Following the success of the hit Bravo franchise, the reality star took a shot at acting. She landed a recurring role on Ryan Murphy's Glee as Roz Washington, which she followed with a role in Murphy's The New Normal as series regular Rocky Rhodes. Her most recent acting role was in the Lifetime movie Hunting Housewives earlier this year, sharing the screen with the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Denise Richards. Outrageous Love with Nene Leakes is produced by Anomaly Entertainment. Leakes, Matthew Kelly, Michael Sorensen, and Karen Infantino serve as executive producers with Amy Savitsky and Nicole Vogel, executive producing for Lifetime. Additionally, Lifetime will premiere Parents Gone Wild following Outrageous Love um, on at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The clips from this series will share relatable moments captured by moms, dads, and kids giving, giving a glimpse into the parenting world. Okay, so Nini's going to be giving her advice on outrageous love, I guess. Congratulations to her for securing the check and a bag. Well, same thing, you know what I mean. And lastly, y'all, let's talk about the upcoming season of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. This is a page six exclusive. New Real Housewife of Beverly Hills star Bozo Bozama, I'm not sure how you say it, St. John teases. Badass season 14 at the Can Lions. Former Netflix chief marketing officer, uh, Bozoma, Bozama, I'm sorry, St. John, recent, I'm going to call her B for right now, recently added Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star to her resume. The new Bravo celebrity, who was currently filming season 14 of the reality show, chatted about her experience with Page Six's virtual reality co hosts, Danny Moore and Evan Real, on Tuesday at Stagwell's Sport Beach Activation during the 2024 Cannes Lions Festival. Filming Housewives, so far it's badass, she said, using her favorite adjective, as she's known to her 50,000 plus Instagram followers as badass Boz. That's what I'm gonna call her Boz. 
Uh, Boss 47 was cast for RHOBH in May, joining series vets Kyle Richards, Erica Jane, Dorit Kemsley, Garcelle Bouvet, and Sutton Strack, as well as friends of the cast, Kathy Hilton, and fellow newbie Jennifer Tilly. The Urgent Life, My Story of Love, Loss, and Survival author has been coming to Can Lions, which convenes marketing, advertising, and media execs with a slew of celebrities, athletes, and public figures for years. I'm a marketing legend, a marketing icon, a marketing titan, and also a housewife, boasted St. John, who, in addition to Netflix, has worked for Uber, Apple Music, and PepsiCo, among, among other high-profile companies. Go ahead, Boz. The reality TV newcomer joked that being a housewife and a marketing legend is essentially the same and gave her top ticks to experience can lines as such. Now, if you want to can like a housewife or a marketing legend, they're actually one and the same. Start with a glass of rosé, advising that a little alcohol can go a long way when networking. It will help smooth the day and then have it intermittently throughout. It will also help with all the conversations you need to have. Earlier this month, St. John's cast castmate, uh, Hilton, who has joined Beverly Hills following a one-season hiatus, raved about their connection during an exclusive interview with Page Six. She's a boss girl. She's a serious businesswoman, the socialite said. So this is Kathy Hilton talking about Boz. I was actually afraid for her because some of our silly stuff. I can roll my sleeves up and get silly. I don't care, Hilton tells us, elaborating on her initial interactions with St. John. I said to her, are we scaring you off? We hope that you're going to come back. The Paris and Love Star emphasized that the fresh diamond holder had acclimated well to the unscripted space. She was like, I was just in the bathroom and I was looking for a window to try and escape. And so we all laughed, she said, but I think it's a fun experience for her. Bravo has yet to announce a premiere date for the forthcoming season. So Boz said, they having a bad ass season, honey. She going to do the thing. Kathy Hilton said she was a little scared for her because, you know, they get silly and she can handle it. But she don't know if Boz can. And Boz said she was in the bathroom looking for a window to climb out of. We will see. So are y'all excited about the addition of Boz? And are you excited about the upcoming season and see how she's going to integrate with the ladies? I am ready to see it. In the words of Monique, I would like to see it. Let me know what y'all think about that. Let me know what y'all think about Nini's new lifetime show will y'all be tuning in to watch and see what it's giving also let me know what y'all think about kelly and all this madness um this drama with her divorce and do you want to see it play out on the housewives of atlanta it'll bring something fresh but then that would be two storylines of divorce being played out unless Portia can't talk about hers at all let me know what y'all think about candy saying she doesn't believe that kenya should have got suspended because you get what you get when you come for somebody, especially if it was already out there on the internet. What do you think about Kenya and Mark's divorce finally being finalized? Um, her tax lien. And what y'all think, what do y'all think about Monica? Do y'all want her back? Do y'all think what she did was a little boo boo for Cocoa Puffs? Like y'all let me know what y'all really think about Monica. I love y'all so much. Thank you for spending this time on Saturday with me. And I will talk to y'all later. See ya. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and please also go to your podcast app, wherever it is your podcasts are located. Even if you don't listen to none, go type in what else is going on and subscribe to mine. All right, y'all. I will talk to y'all later. Love y'all.